uh, for us, thank you very, very much for the invitation for us and founder. And I want to point out Eric Miller at the back of the room, who, who really was the power behind uh, making Mobility Network happen. He's got a mug for it. He's got a mug for it. Um, and I'm glad that he's able to join us for a bit, and I'm really glad that you're here. And I'm wondering who's here, so help me out here. Um, how many people have I met? Okay, great. How many people, how, how many of that was in Zoom, and how many of that was, who was uh, just on Zoom? How, how would I only meet on Zoom? Okay, and who have I met on person? Okay, so we've been around a while, eh? <laughs> who just joined this fall? It's brand new. Okay, welcome. And who came in 2021? We didn't get to meet you. Okay, and, and even back in 2020. Yeah, yeah, so so it's been a long time. It's been a really long time, um, but you know, thank goodness. Thank goodness we're back together again, and thank, you know, because it's going to make so many other things we're trying to do as we go forward so much easier and so much more fun. Because that's the point of creating a space like the university, right? To bring people like you to it, to meet each other, to work together, to work together with your supervisors, and to contribute to new knowledge. And we've done a really, really great job of that on our own, you know, in our in our in our bedrooms, at our kitchen tables, you know, wherever we were, working independently, um, and being connected by technology. Thank goodness, thank goodness, right? But it's gonna be so much better when we get together, we're gonna get so much more done. So I'm, I'm grateful to have this opportunity. This is kind of me coming back. I might be a little bit rusty because I haven't presented anywhere for a really long time. Maybe just to a little window. Do you see my slides? Can you hear me? Okay, you see my slides and you hear me. Okay, Mobility Network. I've been, I've, we've talked enough about me. Um, I'm going to mention the Mobility Network at School of Cities is an institutional strategic initiative at the University of Toronto. So what does that mean? The University of Toronto acknowledges certain collaborative, multidisciplinary groups working on global challenges as institutional strategic initiatives. And a couple of years ago, we were designated, Mobility Network was designated as the University of Toronto Institutional Strategic Initiatives. So that means you've joined a group that is working on global challenges. And you know that to be true. You know that to be true. You look at the world around you and because of the knowledge you have, what you bring to it, what you hope to contribute, you can see the challenges that we face. And so many of them are related to mobility. The University of Toronto thinks so too, and we think that's a great thing. We're really grateful for. And so what are we gonna do? I'm gonna make the case for harnessing the power of collaborative multidisciplinary research to address these challenges. And I'm going to talk about how you can contribute to this, because that's what we're really keen about having people like you and the talent we have in the room here to do that. So when we talk about mobility, what, how do we talk about it? I mean, what's the message we're trying to tell other people? That mobility trans and the transportation systems that, it, that people and goods flow over is central to almost everything that we do in our lives. Right? We built our lives around the transportation systems that we all use every day, and that governs everything out of the ways we move, where we can get to, where we can't get to. It has implications for our health, for our safety, for congestion, for the, for the environment for equity, it's central to everything that we do. And this is a message that we have started telling people and comes as pretty new to them, but then when they stop and think about it, as the ISI people did, they say, well, you're right, this is important. So what would we want, what are we hoping to do? We want to be a catalyst for change. And through the work that you do with, you know, individually, collectively, through your supervisors and other people, find ways to change, to move towards more sustainable, more equitable ways of moving people and goods through there. And how are we going to do it? By establishing, by doing things that establish University of Toronto as a global leader in mobility research, and that's part of where you come in. And through that research, advancing mobility solutions for, as I said, equity, sustainability, and prosperity. And sure. So I like to tell this story about why this is such a big collaboration. So in the beginning, there were the Romans and the Egyptians building roads. And they probably didn't call themselves that at the time, but that was the job of civil engineers. And then came the advent of the automotive age in the last century. And there was more traffic. And we needed better roads and better bridges. And that was the job of civil engineers. 
And then we really had traffic, and we had to manage that traffic. Right? That was still the job, pretty much, of civil engineers. Managing the traffic, understanding where people traveled, why people traveled, when people traveled, collecting data that could be used to understand that travel behavior, and analyzing it. Still pretty much the job of civil engineers. But that, but that community was getting bigger. And more or less in this century, the social scientists began to ask, well, who are these people who are traveling? Why are they traveling? What are they trying to achieve? Um, are they are they achieving it? And are we equitably serving everybody? So that brought them in. And then came the technologists, right? So some of some technology being used to get more capacity out of existing infrastructure, like intelligent transportation systems, and some technology looking to see how we could drastically change mobility systems with. Uh, ride sharing, uh, ride, hair, ride hailing, automated vehicles. And as part of this motivation comes from, you know, if there's so much value in moving people and goods around, if it's so central to everything we need every day, there's a value in there, and surely a smart technology company can extract some of that value of helping you get along in the world. So then, then the technologists. Along the way, we started to recognize the critical importance of goods movement. You know, we used to give talks that said, uh, if there were no goods delivered in, over the course of three days, your grocery shelves would be empty. And then it happened, right? Two and a half years ago, it happened. I took that picture at my local metro. That was what the, that's what it looked like. So the province made moves to allow deliveries overnight, off-peak deliveries, uh, overnight deliveries. Um, that was some work that was supported with policy work here, and uh, and to and we are looking at alternatives to deliver. Have you seen the Pure Later Hub out in St. George Street? Yeah, so that's some you know that's some work being done here, like in the back corner by Usman, right? So looking at new ways, and why do we have to do that? Because in our province, uh, the transportation sector is the largest um, emitter by sector in Ontario, and if we're going to do something meaningful about climate. We're going to have to do something about the transportation sector, and some of that has to do with the goods movement. And speaking of that, along came the climate scientists and engineers as well. So concerned about, as I said, transportation major emitter. Nothing we can do about the climate crisis. It is a crisis unless we address transportation emissions. So then I could just I want to just ask, you know, is that everyone? I don't think so. Right? But the problems just keep getting richer, more complex. The challenge is greater. The scope of people, oh, I should not have timers on here. I took them off. Sorry about this if we have to struggle. Um, there are more people. And so we put out the call in Mobility Network around the University of Toronto to see who would, be, who would identify themselves as somebody doing mobility research from any angle, from many perspectives. And so we collected the names of about 64 faculty from across three campuses of the University of Toronto in many, many, many dis different disciplines. So we brought in political scientists to the mix. We have people at Rotman, up at the Muck School, and of course, civil engineers, chemical engineers, electrical engineers, uh, mechanical engineers, industrial engineers, computer scientists, you know, the earth science people we know well, uh, geographers and planners, um, a very, very a diverse group of people eager to see how their research can contribute to uh, to the mission of Mobility Network. So they call it the really big tent, which somehow had to be organized. Three campuses, 64 people, you know, their students, their students like you, they all have students in the large group. So we, we workshopped this through several uh, rounds of workshopping and over the years as we worked on this and identified what we decided to call knowledge clusters. So we have seven knowledge clusters, and if you see in the middle, there are five. And we call those sort of like basic disciplinary areas. So we identified urban equality and inclusion as an important area, land use planning and economy, climate change and health, mobility technologies and services, and freight and urban goods movement. So put up your hand if you see yourself in one or more of those areas. Can you identify with those? If anybody doesn't have their hand up, come and see me afterwards. <laughs> we might have missed something, okay? 
And that's always, as I said, is there anybody else? We might have missed something, you know. So we, we will we will adapt to what the truth is and not make, you know, you adapt to us. So talk to me afterwards, we're missing something. The idea of these other two circles is that all of this work has to take place because we're moving people and goods for people in the context of people and what they need and what they want. You know, who are they? Demographics. So we have to understand people. And so this is our study of behavioral analysis and because we're engineers, we do modeling um, of the people and making it work. And then the bigger circle is intended to show that all of this has to happen within the reality of the social, political, economic systems we live in. You know, they're man-made, they're made up. We made them up. You know, they, they, they are there, but we also have to operate in them. And a great goal for us is to learn how to more effectively translate our research into knowledge that can be used for decision making in these critical times as we go forward. Um, so, uh, we have some great leadership. Each of our knowledge clusters has a knowledge cluster leader. And uh, these may be faces that you know and faces that you don't know yet. And that will be a great thing as we begin to get into mobility network activities and you get to meet people from across you know, the University of Toronto. So what did we said we, were we would do? Well, we said we're going to undertake activities in several categories uh, through our knowledge clusters by supporting our knowledge clusters to do, to do this work inside areas that are interesting to them. Um, that will lead to outcomes um, that will help us to achieve our goals. So we went through an extensive bit of thinking and workshopping this uh, to come up with this. I, the theory of change that says, if we do this, these other things will happen. Right? So this is our goal. And what has that got to do with you? Well, I mean, you're here to be graduate students, postdoctoral fellow researchers, and you're going to contribute to knowledge. And out of that, you know, as we expect that you're going to do the things that you do, which is go to conferences and write papers, and continue to make the University of Toronto, you know, the great research university that it is. So that's job one. But as well, we hope to, we hope as well to enhance your time here, and for you to contribute to a mobility network. So we would like to facilitate some internal networking with others, uh, invest in you with some training, mentoring, and professional development activities, have give you create opportunities for you to network externally, and have you give you opportunities to get your knowledge out there too. And what do we think that that will help us to do? Grow the U of T mobility ecosystem. We believe there's value in bringing people together. Um, through all your great work, we'll, your bit by bit contribution is going to establish the University of Toronto as a as a leading research, a leading global leading researcher in mobility, University in transportation research. And we call it graduating change makers because when you leave, you're going to go out into industry and research, government and practice in some way. And we want you to be great. There's a lot of there's a lot of need in the world. There are a lot of challenges, and you have to be part of the solution. So, hopefully, your interests align with the, those of Mobility Network. And then I'm going to talk about some of the things we have planned to do in terms of for you and for you in terms of developing technical skills, uh, professional development, getting ready for the world. And networking, having giving you opportunities to meet people in our network, because we have a large network of partners in, um, in industry and government that work collaboratively on our projects. And as well, you will be joining, uh, you'll become a University of Toronto alumni. And as University of Toronto alumni, you'll join, the, the, if you have an opportunity, you'll want to join the Transportation Alumni Network which is a group of people, and I have talked about that more. So, if you want to be a change maker, what did we do last work? Last year, we um, ran some conference prep workshops. We put postdoctoral fellows on our management committee. We had UTM graduate and undergraduate small research grants. Our, our alumni network ran student competition, and we ran a summer school, which maybe some of you were at. Anybody here at summer school? There's one. There were a lot of people there. Uh, okay, well, hang on. They'll be next year. Okay? Wait. All right. And what's going on this year? Well, the call has gone out 
for the, uh, the University of Toronto Mississauga Mobility Network Graduate Research Awards. Um, so I don't know if anybody here, uh, would, what you, the real, uh, the, the strict eligibility requirement because it's at University of Miss, Toronto Mississauga is that there, somebody have a supervisor at UTM. Otherwise it's open to all graduate students at the University of Toronto. So if there's anybody here who, uh, who is uh, not in civil engineering, have any guests, um, there's an opportunity there. And we're preparing, uh, again, to do the conference prep workshops. Last year we got all ready to do the TRB and pull the plug when Omicron came and everybody canceled their travel plans. Um, but we did do a conference prep session for AAG and we're prepared for, so we're all getting ready now to do it again for TRB. Um, so we'll do that in January. Um, and then for your colleagues over in geography and planning, we'll do another uh, prep session for geography and planning. If you think there are people headed off to other conferences where this would be helpful, let me know. Um, we just, uh, we just yesterday made presentations to the CA board and we got prep for that too. So um, there'll be a, a summer graduate student conference um, and there will be another uh, summer school. So watch for that. And I mentioned the alumni network. So you, you're going to be alum, some of you sooner than later, right? And here's an opportunity to join up with the, if you want with the alumni network. So one of the things we realized when we went out is that, well, for 40 years, this place has been producing people who moved into industry and government. And then the consultants work for the city. And the city people, the people leave the city and go work at a consulting firm. And this back and forth. So they all know each other. And they're graduates from U of T. And there are two kinds of graduates from U of T who end up working in transportation. Some of them are like you. And you came here um, with the goal of becoming transportation researchers and professionals. But other people that you'll meet when you move around in the world are working in these places and in these roles, but they did something else entirely when they at university. It's their career that's taken them to be transportation professionals. So the University of Toronto Alumni Network is open to anybody who's a University of Toronto graduate who identifies themselves as a transportation professional. So it's a diverse group of people from law and history and English and engineering and so on, and planning and so on um, that's pulled together. And as I said, every year they run a student competition, um, which just came off uh, about September 20th. Um, and I'm happy to say I think the good times are back. They will also be running a networking session. So they have two mandate, a, a dual mandate. One is giving back to students through things like the student competition, and the other work is, and the other mandate they have is to network, create a network among the alumni. So um, it's been a hard, been a hard couple of years to keep that ball in the air, for sure, because we didn't do anything like this. Um, but but it's back on, it's back uh, in the next meeting agenda. So all of this is brought to you by um, the leadership at Mobility Network. I always showed you the picture of the knowledge cluster leaders that we have. And also I mentioned that Eric is a director. Um, Eric has, you know, devoted decades of, 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 of service at the University of Toronto because of his belief in the importance of this kind of um, multidisciplinary collaborative approach to research to address the problems that we have. So this is Eric, keep, Eric keep, I've been working with Eric for about eight years. Um, I think the Transportation Research Institute was mentioned, so we started with the University of Toronto Transportation Research Institute. Thank you very much to the Dean of Engineering uh, for the support that they gave us to get that going, and of course civil engineering, which has always been a great home for us. Um, but we knew that we really needed to get a bigger, a bigger brand so that we could really welcome people from across three campuses and many disciplines. And so Eric, Eric kept going, pushed it through, and here we are today. So we have three campuses involved. We have an associate director at UTM, Sean Frail, and at uh, UTSC, Steve Farber. And we started off all this by saying that I'm the managing director. And our staff. So they're all around. And our staff, so over here, just joined us, Khadijah. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, like two weeks on the job, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two weeks on the job. 
So she's our education specialist, and she's going to be taking on a lot of the training and mentoring professional development programming, so get used to hearing from Khadija. Uh, Pat, everybody, Pat's, Pat, Pat's been in your inbox for a lot of time, many, many years. So Pat does our events and communications coordinator, and Christos, I know is here. There he is. <laughs> there he is, there he is. Christos joined us last January. Um, he's, uh, he does administration for us and coordination of activities, because if you see in the crowd around here, we have a lot of coordinating to do. So it's just great. Uh, you know, this is my first time coming down to the office with my team. I imagine that's a pretty special day. I've been working on Zoom, but it's a pretty special day. And they thought it was pretty special to come out and be here with you, too. So. So what do you have to do? If you want to do, if you want to do this, like answer the call when it comes. You see that stuff in your inbox, you know. Please reply. So we're going to be circulating some kind of form from Mobility Network to collect some information about you, so we can contact you about activities. So sign up, okay? Just please sign up. It starts there. We have to find, find you. You are well organized. So the IT student chapter makes it easy, and there are other little clusters like that. But in many parts of the university, because we've reached out newly to these areas, you know, the students aren't organized. Um, so we have to go out and collect that information. So you guys are already organized. You could make it easy on us. Thank you very much. Okay, I don't think you, unfortunately, that money out at UTM is probably not available to you. But if you're off to TRB and you get the call about the conference prep workshop, please sign up. Right? Um, and there will be opportunities there for other students if you like to uh, join the activity and provide feedback. If you're not going to TRB or you're not presenting, you can provide peak feedback to your peers. So if you want to, you can answer the call for that, see what it might be like for you next year. Okay. Um, for the Graduate Student Symposium Summer School, stay tuned. Plans are getting underway. And in the Alumni Network, I would encourage you to volunteer. They'll be looking for members, you know, uh, student members, um, new graduate members to join the alumni network. It's a good way to get out and meet people and do other things and get on board with the networking there. What else can you do? Uh, we have a website, 1.0, we're working on 2.0. If you go to the website, um, mobilitynetwork.utoronto.ca, you'll find some basic news about the people who are involved and the things that we're doing. We have uh, a LinkedIn group, and you can follow us on Twitter. You can post and repost things that we do on Twitter. And you can subscribe to our newsletter. How many people get the newsletter on Thursday afternoon? OK, great, some of you. Well, if you go there, you, you can subscribe, and then you'll get um, uh, just news about what people in our network are doing and other interesting things that are going on that you might like to, you know, register for, follow, um, know about, right? And if you'd looked at yesterday's newsletter, you would have seen a profile of the scholarship winners from CAA and that they presented at the board meeting. And it went really, and it went really, really well. And you know how it went well. You know how you know it went well. Because there were really good questions afterwards. Really, you know, if, if there's no I'm going to ask that soon, right? <laughs> if there are no questions, then you have to say, oh no, what was that about? Right? There are really, really good questions afterwards. They did a fantastic job, a really fantastic job. And that's the kind of news that you'll see. And like, let's hope that we see you in there, is our hope. So with that, I'd like to under, you know, find out what you think and, you know, see what you have for ideas and what sounds interesting to you. Can we help?